Well, it's been 60 days on this carnivore diet journey. Has it been worth it? You're gonna have to stay tuned to find out. Hi, I'm Susan. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In this video today, we're gonna be talking about, as I mentioned, the results of this 60 day carnivore diet journey. Uh, topics are gonna include the status of my high blood pressure, the status of my weight or weight loss, and just overall well being. What are my thoughts on the diet? What are some typical meals that I eat? Um, I'll share uh, basically some of the things I pick up at the grocery store. And, you know, just kind of an update as to where I've been the last 60 days, what my goals are for the next 30 and beyond. Uh, my original commitment to this diet was for 90 days, but I can tell you right now, I will be continuing. It may be more of a ketovore journey after 90 days, but we'll see. Uh, there's more to be determined once I hit that 90 day spot. So let's get into the story. Okay, before I hop into the overall 60 days, I do wanna give you an update for the last seven. Um, that is typically what I do is give a weekly update. So for the last week, I lost one pound. I went from 198.2 last week to 197.2 this week. I don't know what it is about that 0.2 in my scale, but um, it happens a lot. So that means that I'm still averaging like 1.2 or 3 pounds per week, which is a sustainable and healthy weight loss. Overall, for the past 60 days, I have lost a total of 13 pounds. So I am absolutely ecstatic about that because losing weight for me has been a major struggle just due to lack of exercise and mobility, really just sitting on my ass all day uh, at the computer. Hashimoto's hypothyroid, which being 61 and having a, an underperforming thyroid, really just is two strikes against me, but they're big ones. I have not been able to lose weight for a plethora of years now. Uh, so the fact that since April, which is when I started my health journey, I didn't start carnivore until uh, July, but from April to July, I went from 225 pounds down to 210. When I started carnivore, I was 210. And as I mentioned today, I'm 197.2. So to me, that's fantastic. So since I've started this weight loss journey, that is a total of 28 pounds. I'm ecstatic. Let's talk about blood pressure. So my last seven day update, I was able to keep my blood pressure in the normal range, except for one day. One day it was, I believe, 124 over 76. So the only thing that was above normal was the 124. I don't count that as elevated. I'm sorry, it was probably just, who knows? And honestly, according to my doctor, anything from 130 and below is just fine with her compared to what my blood pressure used to be, which at times was up into the 198 range. So, big win. Now, for the last 60 days, let's look at it. When I started carnivore, uh, the blood pressure was averaging right around 145, 138. I mean, it would just fluctuate up and down there. Very rarely did I take my blood pressure and it was within normal range, which is the 120 over 80 or below. And so that first 30 days really didn't see much improvement. Um, some, but not, it was still in the elevated range. The last 30 days, however, uh, the first half of the 30 days was still a little bit elevated. And then I don't know what happened, but literally the last two weeks, the blood pressure has just been mwah, beautiful. Um, it has been in the green every day except for one day, uh, which is the day this last week. And I was pretty stressed out that morning, uh, just dealing with some drama. And so uh, I understood why it was elevated, but you know, the fact that it is remaining green uh, day after day, I'm ecstatic. Now, caveat to that, 
I am still taking my blood pressure medicine as well as a pill for um, just helping with water weight or water retention. My plan is to get completely off of that once I have a little bit more history of having the blood pressure in the green. And of course, I will be doing that um, after consulting with my doctor. Uh, and this is a great place to insert this disclaimer. I am not a dietitian, a nutritionist, a, uh, a medical doctor of any kind. And anything that I share on this channel is not trying to encourage or entice anybody to do the carnivore diet. That's something that you're going to have to take up for yourself and with your medical doctor. But I am not here to claim that the carnivore diet uh, cures any type of disease, lowers blood pressure, anything like that. I'm not making any medical claims. I'm just letting you know what is happening in my body while being on this carnivore diet journey. Okay, now let's talk about sleep or the lack thereof. So over the last 60 days, one of the things that I was hoping to see an improvement in is my sleep patterns. That hasn't really been the case. I have suffered with insomnia for years. And along with that insomnia, I've also struggled with almost like narcolepsy, but it's not narcolepsy. But I would have just extreme bouts of fatigue that would be onset like very quickly to the point where I would have to go lay down and take a nap because I just could not function. My body would just shut off and say enough's enough. And when that would happen, I would often sleep for a number of hours and then wake up and it didn't matter if it was the middle of the day, middle of the night, I would be awake. And it was a, it was a problem, especially when I was working. I, I found it very hard to maintain any level of energy throughout the day and uh, often would stay up all night and have to go to work at 6 30 7 o'clock the next morning just simply because i could not get my brain to shut off so i was hoping to see improvements in that and i'm not saying i haven't seen any improvement it just hasn't been as drastic as i'd like like i mentioned so i still have my biggest problem with sleep is i have a hard time falling asleep at night probably because I lay in bed and watch television. But if I was to just go in and lay down and turn all the lights off and try to go to sleep, I would lay there and my brain would just race, like thoughts would just continue to go through my brain. So I have to, I have to do that. I don't know that I have to. It's a pattern, right? Um, I have tried to go to bed without watching television and it just doesn't work folks i just lay there so i don't know what that is about my sleep again i'm, I'm no doctor <laughs> so uh i i can't i can't explain it but uh, i'm still waiting for that that beautiful sleep pattern where i am tired early in the evening and i can just you know unplug go in lay down go to sleep and then wake up refreshed I do wake up much, much better than I used to. I mean, for me, I was one of those people set the alarm, sometimes five alarms, and I would go through each one of them before I had to get up. And it was literally set to the, okay, this is the last minute that I can get up and still be able to get what I need done and make it to work. Um, now, clearly not having to be up as early to go to work every day, uh, I am able to sleep in a little later, so currently my wake-up time is typically somewhere between 8.30 a.m. and sometimes, not going to lie, 12.30, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Now, that just depends on do I have something I have to get up early for or not. Uh, I don't like to sleep late in the afternoon because then, you know, once you get up and get around, half, more than half of your day is gone and it just continues to perpetuate that, um, that sleep cycle that's not working. So I would really love to get my circadian rhythm um, in check and be able to sleep like a normal human being, if there is such a thing. Okay, let's talk about diet, meaning nutrition. So what do I eat on a daily basis? Well, for the most part, the thing that I have found over the last 60 days is that I'm just not hungry. 
I usually have to force myself to eat every day. So I usually only eat one big meal a day. I eat till I'm full. And if I do snack, it's typically gonna be on pork rinds or my very favorite carnivore snack, which is dirty carnivore, I will say. This isn't true full blood lion diet carnivore, but is fried pork bellies. Uh, these things are amazing. So I'm gonna input some pictures here of typically some of the meals I have eaten over the past 60 days. Things like ribeye and fried eggs, ribeye and scrambled eggs, hamburgers with cheese, all beef, um, grass-fed hot dogs, organic hot dogs. I don't know if they're grass-fed, but they are organic. So basically meat, eggs, the only cheese I eat is what goes on my hamburger. Every once in a while, I'll slip in a piece of string cheese, but it's a very rare occasion. Chicken, I think I've had chicken twice in the last 60 days. So, and then bacon, right? Um, but I haven't even eaten bacon that much. So it really has basically been red meat in the form of ribeye steak and hamburger. I do cook a lot of chuck roast, um, put it in the crock pot and it just melts in your mouth. Oh my God, it is delicious. Uh, and the only seasonings I use uh, for that is just salt, pepper, and uh, I do put a little bit of onion in it, and then, you know, water, that or beef broth. Uh, I do use uh, beef broth for that. So uh, that's it. I mean, I do often put uh, some keto-friendly spices on my hamburger, but when it comes to the steaks, uh, I mean, it's salt and pepper. That's it. So that's kind of it in a nutshell i am gonna share you know some pictures here of a recent shopping trip to uh, sam's and just kind of share some of the things that i pick up so you can get a sense of it Yeah, so that's basically what I eat. Nothing fancy, nothing special about it. I have found that it saves me money in the long run because, I mean, before when I would go to the grocery store just to get things to cook for one meal, I mean, it was nothing. I'd walk out of there with $150. But I can go to Sam's now and pick up, I don't know, uh, enough to eat for probably a week, week and a half at least and spend under $200. So definitely saving in groceries, as well as just the struggle about what am I gonna eat tonight? I mean, literally I can, my choices are on one hand, right? Hamburgers, steak, roast. Every once in a while I'll throw in a hot dog and eggs. So it, you know, it just makes life so much easier. All right, well now let's talk about fitness. I started this journey, as I said, eight weeks ago. The first week I did no exercise whatsoever. Um, I was struggling with carnivore diarrhea, uh, still bloated, still very inflamed, uh, joints hurt, tired, all of that. So wasn't really in the frame of mind or really just felt good enough to do any type of exercise whatsoever. Uh, beginning on day seven, I did start walking and my goal was to walk two miles a day. And so I did that. I was averaging five to six days a week, but my body, you know, sometimes would have other plans in mind. <laughs> then at one point I did increase from just trying to get to that two mile mark to trying to go for a full hour. So along the way, um, I did encounter some challenges. Uh, things like plantar fasciitis early on, which I have a history of. I've actually had surgery on my right foot for that. Just really sore ankles, hips hurting, etc. I still just would continue to push through until, you know, I just couldn't do it. So I had to take a day or two off. This past week, I started experiencing some left knee pain, which was new. Uh, 
I, I don't know what's going on with that knee, but I'm able to walk on it. But if I step just a certain way, or if I twist a certain way, it gives me that little twinge or that little pinch feeling. Uh, so there's definitely something going on there. Uh, in my walk last night, uh, I started developing, I, I don't know what it is, it almost feels like my foot's broke uh, on the left. I, I don't know how to explain it, but it's very painful. But once I start walking and I push through the pain, it seems to be okay. But then as soon as I take my weight off of it and get my feet up, let's just say lay down or whatever, um, and I go to get back up, it's, I mean, it's, it's rough. I don't know what's going on with it. So back when I used to work, I had amazing insurance and I often went to the chiropractor. I got laid off in April, so I haven't been. I think it's probably time for me to go see the chiropractor again. Uh, I do need to figure out how much that's going to cost, you know, on a cash basis, because I, I just didn't need to know that information before. So we'll have to see if it's financially viable for me to go. Um, even if it's not, I may have to just suck it up because, uh, you know, the whole reason of doing this carnivore diet is to get healthy, to reclaim my life and having issues walking just doesn't cut it. I've got to be able to be active. One more update uh, from last week. Last week, I did mention that I started experiencing numbness in my thumb and first two fingers and it just came out of nowhere. It was a little scary at first when I started Googling, you know, Dr. Google, uh, what it could be. And one of the things it said was that it could be a pre-warning sign of a stroke. Well, you know, as I mentioned last week, my brain is fine. I, I've had MRIs on my brain. Um, what the more likely culprit is, is that I had uh, a trapeziotomy or ectomy. I don't know which E goes at the end of that. But uh, in both of my hands, in my thumb joints, uh, which is the trapezium bone, I do know that, they had to go in and remove those because I had arthritis where it was just bone on bone. Now, I wish that I would have taken on the carnivore diet journey prior to having those surgeries because I have read, again, not making any medical claims, but I have read where the carnivore diet can improve cartilage uh, that has been lost. I don't know, don't quote me on it, but I would have liked to have tried the carnivore diet journey to improve that arthritis before doing something as drastic as taking bones out of my hand. The right hand definitely did not heal correctly. Uh, my thumb just kind of hangs there. Um, and so what I did was I purchased this new kind of a brace. Uh, typical wrist braces or thumb braces only keep the thumb stable from moving, right? So you don't have that pain. But I needed a brace that supported right here where that bone was taken out. And so this is uh, got steel in it where you can mold it and push it. So it's actually giving me some stability where that joint is missing or where that bone is missing. And so it's a little, little numb in the very tip of it, a little tingly, but way better than it was a week ago. So that's just probably going to need some time to heal. And uh, I'm just going to continue trying this and see how it goes. So where do we go from here, you may ask. I'm going to continue on this journey. I am not doing the full-blown strict carnivore, which is literally um, beef, butter, salt, and water. Uh, although I may try that for a week and just see what happens, but I can't imagine giving up my coffee every morning. That would be a tall order. Could I do it? I could. Uh, you know, I've overcome, uh, I've been clean and sober for, it'll be 25 years in January. So I know that when I put my mind to something and I choose and I make that decision, uh, I can stick to it. Do I want to? Absolutely not. My coffee is the one thing uh, for me that I just absolutely enjoy. And uh, I'm, I'm just not, I'm not uh, interested in giving that up anytime soon. So if you're considering starting a carnivore diet, here are some things that you might experience. Carnivore diarrhea, it's a thing. 
who likes to talk about poop, right? <laughs> I sure don't. But I, this channel is nothing but being transparent and authentic. So I want you to be fully aware of what my journey has been like. Carnivore diarrhea typically only lasts for the first week or two. And then every once in a while it may flare up, but it's, it's something that you can work through. And there are things that you can do to help it, such as increasing fat, decreasing fat, increasing protein, etc. Constipation, to the point that it became a problem one week. Uh, I really dealt with that where I, I had to get laxative. But because I'm not eating a whole lot and my body is using all of the food that I'm eating for nutrition, I don't have a lot of waste. Um, and I do say with a caveat, I am a stage two colon cancer survivor. I had 16 inches of my transverse colon, so my upper colon, removed in 2005. And I went through six months of chemotherapy. So. Uh, I don't do this willy-nilly, right? I do take into consideration all of the old myths about red meat and um, how you're gonna get colon cancer and heart disease and all of that due to increased cholesterol and blah, blah, blah. I get regular checkups with my um, oncologist, so I, I have no concerns there. I've done my homework and I feel safe in me taking this journey. Now, again, uh, before taking on any type of a diet, I 100% recommend that you discuss it with your doctor. I will put some links to some doctors, uh, such as Dr. Ken Berry. There are some other uh, carnivore doctors that I will reference down in the description that can talk to all of the health benefits, because again, I'm not qualified to speak on any of these things, uh, but they are. They have the medical degrees and licenses to discuss these things. So go check those out in the description below. Uh, next thing I would recommend, drink lots of water. I would like to get in a gallon of water a day. Some days I do, most days I don't, but I am drinking at least 68 ounces of water a day. And not just water, okay? You've gotta make sure that you are getting your electrolytes in. Uh, because if you aren't getting those electrolytes, uh, magnesium, potassium, your sodium, right? You're gonna end up with leg cramps from hell they are no fun, uh, trust me. You'll also get headaches. So there are some things that you, you know, you want to avoid. So make sure you're hydrated and getting your electrolytes and minerals in. I personally am drinking Element, so L-M-N-T, electrolytes. My favorite is the chocolate and the mango chili. And I will also have a link down below for those. Now, I do have to give you a disclaimer. If you happen to click my link and use my code, I get some kind of a kickback. I don't know what it is. I think it's points or something towards a free box, but you get a free sample pack with your first order. I love them. They are amazing. I have tried another kind of electrolytes on the market. They were just pure salt flavor. Uh, even though they were flavored, all I could taste was the salt and it was just not appealing. I, I have to have something that tastes good. I'm a taste kind of gal. And so Element for me is the way to go. Uh, I also am taking Paleo Valley organ supplements. No affiliation. I'm there, you know, I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. Um, I may be an affiliate. If I am, just know if you click on my link, I will have the disclaimer that I get some kind of a kickback for that. But for the most part, they are just affiliate links. So they're not paid sponsorships or anything like that. They are legitimately products I use that I have found beneficial to my journey. You know, just making sure that you're you're keeping up with those things that are important, your minerals, your electrolytes, all of that kind of stuff. So with those things that can kind of derail you a little bit, um, I wanna talk about the benefits, my benefits. Your results may vary. Increased brain function, brain energy. I don't know how to describe it other than, you know, my brain just woke up creativity, you know, these aren't tangible things, but, and I, I can't measure them other than uh, I, I just have a desire to use my brain more, to be more creative and to just learn more stuff than I've, I have in many, many, many years. Kind of asleep for a while. I think I was just checked out with burnout from my job, uh, just the situation of my health, all of that. Obviously, uh, lower blood pressure. Um, again, 
I'm not claiming that this is curing it in any way, shape or form. I can just tell you my results. Blood pressure has decreased significantly as of 60 days on this diet. Uh, the end goal is to get off of all of my medication, thyroid medication and high blood pressure medication. Those, they're the only ones that I'm taking that are prescribed. So super excited to try to get off of those, you know, by the end of the year. Uh, weight loss, clearly, that's not why I started this journey. It's absolutely a huge benefit of this journey so far is the continued weight loss. And um, just that overwhelming feeling of well-being. The inflammation is definitely not there like it was. The aches and pains in my joints, not there like it was. But overall, just a, a huge sense of feeling better. And I'm comfortable in my own skin again. Where before I started this journey, uh, the only way I can describe how I felt was the the big marshmallow blob on Ghostbusters or like the Michelin tire guy. Uh, just, you know, nothing but rolls of fluff. We'll just put it that way. I, I was just, I just felt like I was blown up all the time. And um, I was disgusted with the way I looked in the mirror. And so just that overwhelming sense of pride in my appearance. Uh, I care about how I look uh, there for a while. I, I just didn't give a shit, point blank. Uh, but now I, I, you know, I look better in my clothes. And so therefore I want to look better. I want to put my best foot forward and my best face forward whenever I can. Uh, just because, you know, it's true. When you look good, you feel good and vice versa. So, you know, saving money on groceries, I've named off quite a few. But that's where we're at, folks. Um, again, I'm not saying that the carnivore diet is right for you, but hey, if you have been pondering it, what are you waiting for? Just give it a try. You'll never know unless you do it. And for those of you that have been on this journey, uh, and if you've made it this far, thank you. I appreciate you being here and all of the support and love that I have got uh, from this carnivore journey, from the carnivore diet community. Um, it's a wonderful group of people that just surround you and show you love and support. But if you are currently on the carnivore journey and no matter what stage you're in, if you're just starting, if you've been on it for 60 days, 90 days, a year, five years, I'd love to hear your stories. Place them down in the comments. Let's give people that might be considering the carnivore diet more examples of why they might find the carnivore diet beneficial. And I'd just love to hear your stories. So with that, y'all, uh, as always, thank you so much for being here. And as I always say, go out and live full out with passion and purpose and make it a great day. I'll see you on another video. Take care.